the town of King Sinbad and the Falcon. They say that there was a king among the kings of Fars who was a great lover of sport, of riding through the great gardens, and of all kinds of hunting. He had a falcon which he had trained himself and which never left him by day or night, for even during the night he carried it upon his feet and when he went hunting and cursing took it with him. He had also a little cup of gold hung from her neck at which he used to drink. One day as he was sitting in his place, his chief falconer approached him saying, King of the Aegis, the weather is too right for hunting. The king made ready and taking his falcon set out with a great company and came at length to a valley where they spread the hunting nets. Suddenly a gazelle fell into the nets and the king said, I will kill him who lets her pass. Then they began to narrow the hunting net about the gazelle so that she came near the king and standing on her hind legs broke her forelegs close to her cheese as if she wished to salute him. On this, the, on this the king clapped his hand to frighten the gazelle and she leaped over his head and fled far away over the plain. Turning to his huntsmen, the king saw them winking at each other, so he asked his wiser why they were winking and the other answered. I think they are reminding each other of what you said, that you would put anyone to death who let the gazelle pass. Then the king cried out, By my life, we must follow this gazelle and bring her back. So he galloped at full speed on her track, and when he came up to her, the falcon stuck her above the eyes with his beak blinding and bewildering her and the king took his mess and rolled her over with one blow then he dismounted to disassemble and fly the animal and afterwards hung the carcass on his saddle bow by this time both the king and his horse had become fine from thirst the day being very hot and the place a dry waterless desert but changing to look round, the king saw a tree down whose strong water was falling as thick as butter. The king, who has his hand covered with leather gloves, took the cup from the falcon's neck, filled it with this water, and placed it before the bird. But the falcon hit the cup with his claw and knocked it over. Again, the king filled and still thinking that the bird was thirsty, placed it before him, but the falcon knocked it over a second time. Then the king became angry with the bird and filling the cup a third time, held it out to his house, but the falcon fluttered forward. The thousand neck and one neck and knocked it over with his swing. Allah it thumped you. You, you will omit bird, cried the king. You have prevented me from drinking and the horse also to say nothing of your skill self. So he stuck at the falcon with this sword and cut both her wings. Then the falcon lifted her head up as she were saying by it, look into the tree. The king looked up and saw in the tree a knot of serpents dripping their venom like water down the tram. Saying this, he was sorrowful for what he had done and mounting his horse, rode back to his place. Arrived there, he threw the carcass of the gazelle to the cock, telling him to prepare it. Then he sat down, still with the falcon on his hand, but no sooner had he done so then the bird gave a sob and fell dead. At this sight, the king uttered cries of lamentation and rep repentance that he had killed the bird who had saved him from a frightful death. This is the tale of King Sibbat, 
when the wazir heard the tale of King Yunan, great king, dignified majesty, he said, What evil have ye I ever done that had so sad an ending? Only out of love for my king have I spoken as I have. Later you shall see the truth of my words. Hear me, and you are safe. Regard me not, and I fear that you will perish as perished a certain teacher's house who was zero who harmed the sun.